This replacement part came with a, a grease fitting. The original did not. So we'll turn this in here with a late millimeter wrench. I'm not going to bore you with the filling it with grease. I had to open these up a little bit with a hand rasp. But now they're ready. So we'll just gently tap this in. Close fit, to say the least. Okay, we'll get the all, get them all in there and torque them down. Okay, so now we're going to remount this lower control arm. Got it in position. Okay, our problem with seating this, it's over on this side. So what we've done now is canned this isolator forward, got it all the way down and even below the surface, then pulled it back, also greased it up up there, in an attempt to uh, get this part, close fitting part, to seat. Okay, it seems to be slipping in there, so we're just going to continue like this until we get it seated. So what I was eventually able to do was tap this isolator, get a vice grip pliers on it. It's pretty much in there now. So I finally managed to get this back, uh, doing it like uh, rubber isolator in here. Got the bolt through. See the use of a pry bar and uh, and also a pin and also a, I drove this up to the bottom to align it circular chisel and um, the vice grip pliers we managed to get it in there oh, a couple of swear words too helped out so I'm going to move on to the front one okay I wound up taking this back out of the knuckle in order to align this hole up here you can see it I've got it in there now get the bolt in so we'll get the nut on the other side. Okay, about the only way that I can get this front bolt in here. I tapped it in all the way. Now I'm attempting to get the uh, the nut on the threads. Boy, there's just no room underneath this thing at all. I don't even think I can get the nut on there. You know what my plan was, get the nut on there and then Turn the bolt head until it seats on the nut. Wow, they've got so little clearance underneath here. There's a part that comes down right at the end of the threads. I'm going to actually have to back this nut, this bolt back off, and then go further in to where you can actually get the uh, the full diameter of this nut. Uh, there's room for it in there. So now in this act of automotive agility here. I've got my finger on the nut, on the end of the bolt, and I'm holding it while I turn it on this 15 millimeter half inch socket wrench, and I caught it. And I caught it, so now it's going to be a matter of holding it. Now that I, I don't really have to hold it anymore, now I can get my wrench in there and hold the nut with that. Much as we did when we put it on. Unless I have it cross-threaded, which of course is possible, I can't tell. Well, it seems to be turning on there freely, so it should be alright. So here we go with our 18 millimeter open ends on the nut. Okay, I'm just going to torque this up. 
good and tight. Okay, so now we're going to finish up on this front one. Remember we had the 21 millimeter box end on the nut and an 18 millimeter half inch drive socket and ratchet on the bottom. Get this vertical nut on here. Pretty heavily torqued nut. Specs are 125. There we are. So now with both the front and the back um, in there, we can seat the ball joint back on the knuckle. Okay, with our ball joint seated, starting to be seated in the steering knuckle. I'm going to tap it until our threads start to show up. And our threads started to show up in there. So we can get our castellated nut on, get it started, and draw this up. Okay, good enough. I think we can start turning now. This was 18 millimeter. No, I guess it isn't. Okay, this bolt should be torqued to 45 to 55 foot pounds. And then, of course, you're lining it up with the hole get the cotter pin through there. If you have to turn it up a little bit more to get there, so be it. And then stick the cotter pin through there. Yeah, that should get us an angle where we can get a screwdriver in there and splay it out. Okay. And there's the ball joint. Best advice I can give you if you're going to do this job, take this out right away. Take out the control arm right away and remove these fasteners. I attempted to do it on the vehicle. Just didn't work out at all. Wasted a lot of time doing that. Save yourself time and frustration. Just pull the whole thing out. Drill it out. Because these things are like pressed in. You're not going to you're not gonna punch, punch them out. They must have to be drilled out. And then you can complete the job. Here's the parts and pieces of our bar link, which is basically just a bolt, a long bolt. First of all, a washer goes down and a, uh, a rubber bushing with a little part on top, a little ri raised ridge on top, and another one. Then a little slider and another washer in this orientation, another bushing. And another pair, and then the nut. So that's the way it's all. That's the way it all goes together. To get it on, what you need to do is to raise up the ball joint on this side in order to, in order to uh, reduce the gap here between the uh, sway bar and the steering knuckle where it's going to fit in. So now we'll disassemble our parts. It's really for starters, I'm taking it through the bottom first. We've got our washer and nut. Now we're going to put another bushing in there, holding it down like that. Our little bar can go in. The last part that goes on the bottom is another bushing. Okay, at this point we've got to get it through I might have it up a little too high here. So I can't, oh, there. 
Okay, we lowered the vehicle just slightly, just enough to get this through. And then our final bushing is in place. And then the nut. And now that we have that all in there, we can take the uh, can lower this again. Okay, so we're continuing to torque this down. And when you start getting it pretty good and tight, get out a torque wrench. It's about 15 foot pounds. Not a lot of torque on this nut, on this sway bar link. I'll check it now. So I think we're about there. Yep. That should do it right there. 15. Okay, so these uh, caliper bolts get torqued to 38 foot pounds. There we are. And there. Okay, we're wrapping it up. I highly recommend putting some grease on the inside of the wheel where it contacts the hub for the uh, rotor. These tend to rust. So. Now this particular car does have just regular steel wheels. So torque these up across in stages and across, ending up at uh, 80 foot-pounds. And that'll do it. Thanks for watching this video.